Fractal Scientist. I'm Victor Hamsa. Thanks for joining me. Um, tonight, today I'm going to talk about a few things. Uh, John of God is one uh, thing that I have to address. Uh, and I did do this on my Facebook page, but I thought it was worthy enough to do on YouTube as well. Um, thank you so much for tuning in again. Um, and I am very cognizant of everybody's time, and I always say that, so I've been known to speak for a long period of time, so everybody likes me to speed up. So hopefully we have some good um, non-lagging issues, some of these lag sometimes. Anyway, to get right to it, uh, Johnny God, false prophet. Uh, is he the false prophet from the Bible? That's maybe something we'll talk a little bit briefly here, and we could come back to that later on. The, the false prophet of the apocalypse, perhaps, or if that's uh, if there is a false prophet in the apocalypse. But uh, just to give you some background of what's going on, if you haven't heard, I'm going to read a little bit. Um, <clears throat> The woman who accused John of God of being a cult leader, uh, rape, of raping his own daughter from, uh, I believe, 10 years old till 14 years old. She had a miscarriage because he beat her so severely when she was having, I guess, got pregnant by some of the staff there. I guess the rest of the staff are just like him. Um, and she calls him a monster. Sabrina Bittencourt, 38 was living under, reportedly living under protection in Spain after receiving death threats. So from this uh, cult, I guess, and the demonic uh, entities around John of God, they took care of her and they killed her. Um, so that's actually the case about four days ago. And uh, she uh, was a, in a hideaway of Spain. Her name was, uh, oops, her name was um, Bittencourt, Sabrina Bittencourt. Uh, she reportedly left a note explaining why she had killed herself. She took the last step so that we could live. Her eldest son, Gabriel Baum, says they killed my mother. More, more than 600 women have accused John of God, real name Jayo Textira de Ferra, of sexually abusing them during the so-called healing sessions. Um, he was arrested in his homeland of Brazil in December and remained in prison before being charged with rape and sexual assault. Uh, cult leader gained international fame 2010 when the U.S. star Oprah Winfrey visited his retreat to interview him for a talk show. She left feeling an overwhelming sense of peace, Just although later she did, deleted the comments and since said she hopes justice is done. Texera de Ferris claims of healing powers brought people from around the world is compound small town of Abedinania. Bill Clinton and supermodel Naomi Campbell are rumored to be among the high profile celebrities that visited the 77 year old. Um, she said he ran a sex slave, so he's taking these uh, young girls, promising food and shelter. They were 14 to 18 years old. He was having them live on. Uh, different parts of different estates that he had. He was having them be like prostituting them out, getting them pregnant, and then taking the children and selling them for forty to $50,000 uh, a pop for the children. And uh, then he would murder them, the, the kids that were having kids 10 years after giving birth. And they have a number of testimonies about this. Um, strange things that affected uh, this afterwards that they had a computer and the, he turned himself in. Before he turned himself in, he went for a week and he withdrew $7,000 and went up to a hideaway he had and where he had a lot of guns and money. And um, anyway, he went and turned himself in. He said, I already turned myself into divine justice. Now I'm turning myself into man's justice. Um, and then when he did turn himself in a computer, kept printing out zeros all over the place. Lights were flickering. Um, 
the guy who was coming to do a photo of him was, I believe a photo was crossing the street and was hit by a car and broke his arm. And a lot of crazy stuff happened uh, as soon as he turned himself in and to this point. So it freaked the cops out enough that they um, went and voiced this to everybody. Um, and they don't normally do that. So uh, is John a God, you know, a false prophet? Absolutely. Uh, you know, know, know the fruits, uh, know the um, tree by its fruit. And that's definitely... Um, you know, uh, false prophet. Are we in the end times? It would lend itself to think that when you have these kind of things uh, transpiring. Um, and just like the way, you know, Jesus said it would. Um, uh, so uh, just thought I'd talk about that a little bit. It, it's, of course, very upsetting. Um, and I do healings and distance healings and not like what John of God did or said he did what he says he's he was doing he's taking in false he's taking in spirits uh like a medium into himself he said of doctors and then he would perform you know psychic surgeries and this crazy stuff and um go take forceps and go up people's noses and cut open people and scrape their eyes and um that's completely you know different from the way i heal uh i i emulate the way Jesus healed as much as I understand uh, and through through um, I know to do the right thing so that's one that's certainly a big huge difference um, just wanted to bring up a couple of things about this whole John of God thing it, it was it was really interesting when I was reading about this guy before back in 2011 and they were saying that if if like uh like Simon in in the Bible where he was channeling spirits and doing false wonders and that's what um John of God was doing as well he was channeling those kind of spirits obviously now we know they're demonic spirits because that's what lend itself into you know doing these kind of um and I'm not saying that you know demonic spirits certainly can heal people because that'll if they're helping to lead people away from Jesus um then that's certainly the case I don't want to lead anybody away from Jesus I want to point you towards Jesus so it's another thing that's different between certainly me and John and then John of God um I wanted to talk and I spoke about this about and I'll circle back about 5G a little bit um so I was talking about that on Facebook as well, and it seemed like it was an interesting conversation where um, now Elon Musk is going to launch his satellites into doing 5G. And 5G, as we all know, is um, it's a higher uh, you know density of radiation that's going to be permeating the Earth with these. Uh, they're going to have these uh, phones that do 5G, and then they're going to, the phones are going to be sending back 5G signals, so we're going to be inundated for with 5G. It goes right through a house, it goes right through your skin, um, you know, it goes right through people. So we're going to be inundated with these higher radio frequencies, um, radiation really, that's going to be permeating our our bodies and everything. Um, you know, our bodies are are set up for we we can't deflect. There's no there's no there's no deflection around our body. So when we have our, um, you know, the, the we're, we're set up a, at a frequency for our, our brains. You know, we have alpha, uh, you know, delta, all these different uh, theta brain waves. So when these, when these frequencies come at you, um, they're going to be, you know, influencing our, our brain waves as well. There's no way around it. Uh, it influences, you know, you on, a, on definitely a different level. I wanted to share a story I was sharing on Facebook. I thought it was a apropos, apropos, apropos story. I said that right the first time. So um, when I was with uh, uh, Native Americans and uh, learning shamanism up in the mountains of uh, Pennsylvania with the, La the Lenape Indians, I... Uh, you know, we would do sweat lodges and it got very spiritual. I left away, left all my, you know, electronic devices behind. We didn't 
even really carry around cell phones at that point too often, believe it or not. Um, and then when after I got through a long, you know, three day session, I went back into the quote unquote world and went back and uh, I remember walking into a store. Um, I don't know what kind of, I guess it was a clothing store. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was, a, and they had these two bars, you know, and you, you would walk through the bars and they had these RFID sensors that if you're stealing something and you're leaving the place, if the sensor, you know, goes in between those bars, then the signal goes off. So that's how, um, you know, they know if you're stealing anything from these, from these places. So anyway, I was all on my, I was all grounded out. You know, I was I was one with the earth at that point. I did the sweat lodge, um, as we say, when you're in the trap, I did a sweat. So I did a sweat lodge, um, you know, and I was keyed in, you know what I mean? Anyway, um, you don't know what I mean, but anyway. So I, I, I'm sorry, but you, you don't only have to, you know, experience it. But I walked through... When I walked through that barrier for the first time in that store, uh, I felt it was like, zzz, and I felt it, you know, zzz, and it hurt. I went, ow, and it hurt like the outer edge of my aura, and it like broke it down and went zzz, zap, and I was zapped with an electrical current. I said, ow, and uh, you know, it hurt. And then I said, what was that? And I noticed it was right when I crossed the threshold into the store. So what I did was I turned around and I said, I mean, it was like, it was like getting buzzed with an electric shock, you know, but I felt it around me, like in my aura. So I walked back across the threshold and nothing happened. And I walked over and I walked back and I walked over and nothing happened. Um, the reason was that it zapped my, you know, my aura around me, it zapped my energy field had just not, you know, zapped it out. It was just like gone. Um, and then I, I, I was upset. I, I realized what happened. I said, oh. I mean, you just spent three days being spiritual and getting really into it. And then you get into the quote unquote world and you go in the store and it zaps you, you know, um, that's, just a small, you know, bit of what can happen if we take these RFID, you know, chips and you put them underneath, you put them underneath your skin. Um, you'll never have the opportunity to experience any kind of spiritual, you know, thing like what I'm talking about. Um, you're not going to have that because it's going to ground you out. It's going to take away that, you know, that energy that you have. Also, when we have these to circle back to it, when we have these 5D, uh, you know, going on, it's just going to have this, uh, you know, this vibrational intensity. It's going to be, you know, a man-made, basically a vibrational uh, frequency that's going to be zapping people all the time. And you're not going to be able to, you know, have that kind of experience. You're definitely not going to. It's going to be a different, you know, frequency uh, than what the Earth is. If it was the same as the earth, then they couldn't transfer, you know, information through it. So obviously it's a different frequency. Um, uh, it's not a natural frequency. That's why I want to relate to you. Um, they're having instances where people are having it on their skin. Uh, they're having skin rashes. I mean, and it's very common, these skin rashes, it's going to be really, really bad for most people. Um, so it's an unnatural frequency. That's a higher, uh, frequency. It's like going to be, you know, radiating through your brain 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I'm not looking forward to that. Being a uh, conscientious objector to that, and we're all law-abiding citizens, correct? So I recommend writing your congressman and saying that you don't want this 5G, okay? Um, so if you're in an airport and there's more of these 5G devices around, it's going to exacerbate that and then you're going to have um 5g all over you you know even more um which is scary so to circle back um you know to 
this whole Johnny God thing. I can tell you uh, that I believe in my heart. I know it for a fact. I'm not a false prophet. There are a ton of false prophets out there, so you have to watch out. You have to be careful. You have to use your Bible. You have to discern them. You have to know, you know, what's going on. Test them. Test these spirits. Test them. Say, do you believe in Jesus Christ? You know, and if they don't, then you know they're a false prophet. I definitely know Jesus Christ was true uh, and, and real. So uh, 100%. And if you don't know why I'm saying that, watch, you know, one of my other videos I have about that. Um, I think I know who's watching me right now. So I see you there. Um, but thanks so much for tuning in. Um, these, these, it, the false prophet, there is a lag, so the devil, whatever, doesn't want me to speak to you, but I'm I'm coming through again loud and clear, I hope. Um, anyway, there's a couple of things I was going to talk to you real briefly about. I'm actually going really quickly. Um, I did this on Facebook, and it was 26 minutes, and here I am, 16 minutes. I said all the things I said there, so I'm doing a good job, I think. Let me know what you think in the comments about that. Um, I just want to mention a couple of other things I noticed in the news today. That there is a um, Russian satellite that has saw in the atmosphere around the Earth this morning. Um, that there were, um, I knew it was you. I just saw the comment. So there was a Russian satellite that saw light flashes around the earth so there's spontaneous light emissions coming up around the planet in the atmosphere not connected to um not connected to lightning or any storms at all so what are we having here we're having spontaneous light emissions um to me what is a spontaneous light emission um, you know, certainly one of the things that comes to mind, it would be, um, a manifested angel, uh, would be a spontaneous light emission. Um, so, you know, to me, angels are beings of light. So if a being of light spontaneously, you know, came up into the atmosphere, that's a that's as as a, in a spiritual sense that's a big deal right so something to be aware of that we're having angels pop into around the earth you know they're just popping into you know the atmosphere and like poof you know big ball of light is is manifesting into our reality um all over the earth um which is interesting um something to be aware of something to watch so i'm putting a watch on it i'm watching it so should you what's going on um could be something uh, you know theory would be that would be the main one could be something uh higher dimensional something going on um unknown unknown so we have some unknowns going on right now um there's a lot of other things in the news right now um we tested a dart device which was the other day um we're going to be testing it it's called d-a-r-t it's a rocket that they're going to be firing at a um as an asteroid in, in outer space to see how it's going against deterring um meteors attacking the planet so it's actually um going at um was it six miles a second and it's 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 a rocket it's gonna hit the uh, asteroid and you know push it out of its trajectory away from the earth it wasn't hitting the earth it's six million six million miles away uh further than the moon but they're gonna push in an outside direct uh trajectory anyway if you're like me you're saying to yourself right about now well, maybe they'll get the trajectories wrong and they'll come back to the Earth eventually. Who knows? But right now they're practicing with it, um, which is, in essence is kind of good. Um, 
uh, something to think about. There's another one. It was Uma, uh, not Uma, Alta, Altma uh, Thum, I believe is the name, is a, um, we had a, um, we have a, um, a spaceship that went past it. It's, uh, it's far away right now. It was taking uh, photographs of it and we're starting to get them. What the really crazy part was that the luminescence off those were at um, basically like only a one or, or a zero in luminescence from this uh, like plantoid, what they're calling it. The plantoid was not round. It was a flat plantoid like a flying saucer. So it was two of them together. Um, but here's the thing. So when you have a object in space and it's spinning all the time then it's giving off different luminescence so it's like flashing you know that's what happens because as sunlight hits it and other light hits it it flashes this one didn't give doesn't give off that it gives off one steady glow which they couldn't figure out they don't understand how it wouldn't be spinning or wouldn't flash so it looks like it was under it's under some kind of control um and the other strange part about it was it's now flat. It's not, it's not round. So it's like, it's in the shape of a UFO. So something that we should, um, you know, be aware of. I think maybe we caught, who knows, a UFO with its pants down and, uh, you know, coming towards it. And I knew if it's going to move off, then it's going to show itself to be under control. So it uh you know stayed in this position i would think and now we're photographing the crap out of it and uh as it goes as it flew by and um we just can't make sense of uh you know the photographs really so it's something interesting to, to watch out anyway thanks so much for tuning in i hope i said something good um if you if you like i could address more of these kind of things if you're interested i like subscribe